Hello everyone, this is CJ Novo 992 and today we're back for another brand new video and I, ladies and gentlemen, it is almost time for the big one, the biggest and best derby that's left in football is almost upon us and in terms of stakes and what's ahead for both sets of supporters, players and managers, it doesn't get much bigger ladies and gentlemen and it's funny right because we've done two of them so far this season, I know English fans like to pretend oh they play each other all the time, <laughs> look they play each other 50 times a season and everything but we played each other three times this year right, it's not went well for us the previous two times but going back and looking at those games, the first one I says whoever wins this doesn't mean they're going to go ahead and win the league title, the second one obviously at Parkhead just before the international break, uh, winter break I should say, I say it doesn't determine who's going to go ahead and win the league at the end of the season, well ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, with what time is left in the season, with what's at stake again psychologically for both sets of the divide, I'm going to say it right now, whoever wins this game, I think, will win the league. So aye, you know what that means, it's ending a draw. But aye, as it is all form time, you can imagine it gets a little bit nippy, and I'll be honest, a wee peep behind the curtain, I'm actually recording this on the Friday, and I don't know if I'm going to post it on the Friday, because I've just watched the press conference, you know what I mean, I've just kicked a chicken and mushroom pot noodle off the shelf at Tesco, I'm in the mood to talk about this game of football right now, so I'm doing it early, I might post it tonight or I might post it tomorrow, so if I do turn things in terms of tomorrow, that, forgive me on that fact, I'm just excited, I'm just nervous, the battle fever is kicking in, ladies and gentlemen, and the biggest and best derby in world football is edging closer, and a game of what at stake, doesn't get much bigger. So if you find yourself watching this video or watching the content, please go hitting that like button or letting us know your thoughts and opinions down there in the comment section below because it's a community channel right here. It's massive. Let's talk about it. And as we go ahead and do that, as always, we will start off by looking at the opposition then, shall we? That doesn't need much introduction, but we'll do it anyway. Celtic currently sit top of the league because a team called Dundee can of look after the park. Celtic and first is no surprise right here on the channel, especially in terms of previews. We've discussed it, unfortunately, a lot. But something has happened this season that is unlike previous seasons because I think I'm pretty fair in these previews. I think most people would say that. Obviously, you get those that didn't. But I give Celtic credit. Like, under Ange Postacoglu, they were an attacking monster. The mentality they had to attack, attack, attack. They were a side that even when they played poorly or even when they did have a wobble, they were built in such a way that, that almost forced success in that way because they always had a late goal in them because that's the way they played. They always had players in the box. So many late goals, so many late moments people can call it luck but sometimes you make your own luck in this world and that's the way that they played and that's the attacking mindset they have but that's not there anymore and what we've seen ladies and gentlemen is when it has been wobbling and when it hasn't been great the prolific Celtic side over the last couple of seasons hasn't been up to their usual standards because let's be honest we're talking about Celtic being in first because of a postponed game. To even suggest or think that could be possible at this stage of the season, gone back a couple of months, would have been absolutely mental to think about. When we were in the trenches of Beal Ball mania, when Beal was sacked, when we had Stephen Davis, a rookie manager, taking us in charge, when we went into an international break, absolutely lost, this Celtic squad was just picking up points and building a league and it looked done and dusty. Yet fast forward in a couple months, the only thing separating this Rangers and Celtic side is a point and the only reason Celtic are sitting top of the league right now is because of some rain at Dens Park. That there is mental. So I find myself in this very unusual position where I have to talk about a Celtic side that's played us twice this year and beat us into old forms yet again through points away and Truthfully, if we could just be honest, they haven't been great this season. And that's not me taking digs or me being biased. I think if you look at the start of the season all the way through, they were maybe picking up the points they should do with the quality of the players that they have got. And everything I'm going to say isn't they taking away from the quality of the likes of Kyogo. Again, he's been the difference in the last old firms. They've got very good midfielders. Carl McGregor does drive their entire machine. Carter Vickers is a difference maker in the back. They have got quality players but it's just no been great this season. In fact, if you look at just the last run, ladies and gentlemen, the last 10 games, they have dropped points in three of them. And that's just unlike the Celtic side we've seen over the last couple of years. They've been beat 
of Hearts, which was very, very enjoyable and badly, badly needed. They dropped points at Park Kid versus Kilmarnock. That's quite metal. And they even dropped points to Aberdeen troops. Aberdeen took points off Celtic. Eh? Is this real life or is this a simulation because I almost didn't believe it? But even in their wins, there's not been really convincing or too many convincing games that were used to of a side of Celtic's quality. I mean, they relied on two penalties, two penalties at Easter Road, one in the first five minutes and one in the last five minutes. It took them two, ladies and gentlemen, two 90 plus minute goals to come from behind to beat Mullerwell, took the lead early in the game, they brought it back to 1-1, they relied on two goals post 90 minutes to beat the Steelmen. It's got to be said, the biggest and most impressive wins over the last 10 games has been against St Johnson, who sit third bottom of the league, beating Livingston twice, one of them being in the cup game, which was quite mental to actually look at as well, as Livingston scored a couple of goals at Parkhead before absolutely destroying them in their most recent game at Tony Macaroni. But again, Livingston are a pub team. This year, if you stuck Benny Hill theme music air and air again and just watched them defend, you wouldn't even bat an eye or think it's strange. They are doing mad things doing at Livy. Their best and most impressive display quite clearly by far over the last 10 games has been that 7-1 win versus Dundee. But again, Dundee let Sam Lammer score for 40 yards, so where do we go? With that. I'm kidding, lads. Obviously, that was a fantastic result and a fantastic performance, but you can't kind of give too much any of that performance because what followed that 7 1 win over Dundee was a 2 0 loss at Tynecastle. So it's been very, very interesting as an outsider look at this Celtic squad because I look at their team sheet, I look at the names on it, I'm seeing good player, good player, great player, good player, great player, good player in there, yet their performances haven't been great, and I think that all goes down to the manager they've got in charge, I think the style of play has been drastically different, but in no stretch of the imagination am I going to sit here and call this side bad, or poor, or iffy, yes, they maybe had a couple wobbles in a season, yes, they've maybe not been at their sharp best, but you know for a fact, this is an old firm game, when the whistle goes, they'll be up for it, and again, to just tell the truth, we played them twice this season. They've beat us twice in that run. That mentality edge that they might feel like they've got going into the game needs to be squashed instantly. And it can only be squashed not by the fans in the crowd, not by the manager at sideline. It's the players on the part. They've got to take that away for the Celtic players who go into this game knowing that they've got 100% win ratio versus Rangers this season. And I'll tell you right now, looking you in the eye, we can't allow that continue on into the next one. And that's truthfully all I've really got to say about the Celtic side. Again, I give them individual credit. They've got some real talent. They just didn't look the full article in terms of a team right now. That's got to be something you've got to go ahead and attack. Celtic, since beating Rangers at Park Heads, picked up 23 points. In the same spell, Rangers have picked up 30 points. You've got to take that momentum and take that belief into this game and come away with all three points. And that's me giving respect to Celtic, but also having to give respect to my Rangers team, ladies and gentlemen, and we'll go ahead and do it, but that's my thoughts and opinions on this Celtic side, still littered with quality, still littered with players that can be big players in these big games, that's the worry, but in terms of a, a, a unit, a cohesive unit, if you will, they just didn't look the same, and maybe you'll disagree with that, but that's how I feel. But enough talking about the Celtic end, it's time to get to the Rangers end then shall we? And I feel like mentality is everything and mentality is key and you're probably going to hear that word mentality a lot throughout today's video. I feel like I could genuinely just end it right here because it's all up here for me now ladies and gentlemen that's all I've been thinking about and that's all I feel that this game requires from this Rangers team because again if you put them side by side, who's playing better? Who's playing nicer football? Who's maybe looking better in terms of a team. It's Rangers right now. We have the momentum. We have the win and run. We are playing better stuff. But again, in these derbies, it's a war. It's a fight. And we've been out for the last couple of derbies. I'm not wanting to go in and talk about referees or anything. I'm sure the clients will give us something to talk about them more. I'm just hoping it's on both sides of the coin. And there's enough football to be played we can talk about the football. I'm talking about battle. We've seen some players shrink. We've seen some people fall away. And that's why we've not won the games we probably should have over the last couple of years. It's all up up here for me. We need to take away the psychological advantage this team has. The mentality strength that this Celtic has. 
for picking up trophies, picking up this, picking up old form wins. We need to rip that away for them early in the game. Didn't he let them settle when I think the first 15, the first five minutes actually, will tell me everything I need to know because everyone watching today's video knows that they've seen in the first five minutes whether or not your team was going to win. It'll tell us everything and I just hope the players selected by the manager treat it and just attack this game because that's the way it's going to be if we want to be lifting the trophy at the end of the season. Now, I think the most natural comparison in the world is going to be the Kyogo Dessers debate, because again, that's going to be the conversation point. Kyogo's had moments this season, as Dessers going to finally take us. He's had the opportunities, but he's no shot, um, shot sorry, or no took his opportunities. Clement spoke him highly up in the press conference, and I like that. He has been playing well, he has been looking fitter, and he's definitely got the attributes to affect this Celtic backline that does look very, very iffy and that's all on that laddie, and I just hope we're talking about Dessers and we're not talking about Kyogo. Is that enough? Is that enough to be asking for tomorrow? But regarding the rest of the team, thankfully from a Rangers perspective, everyone else that played last week is available to go. The likes of Kamal Rufi weren't selected is available to go, but again, I think you've got to ride the, the hot hand, if you will, in terms of Dessers, and I just hope Dessers has his moment. The biggest conversation point is going to be the likes of Seema. Do you start Seema in this game? He's not ready for 90 minutes, but is, is he better starting the game? Are we going to start fast or is he better coming on the last 15, 20 minutes chasing a goal? It'll be interesting to see how Clement plots and decides to attack the Celtic squad, but the biggest discussion point is obviously going to be at left back as I feel it is so damn important. Now, Clement's played his cards pretty close to his chest regarding Ridvan Yilma saying there's no been decision made yet. It'll be made tomorrow. It's like a 50-50 call and for me, I just hope that lands on tails, ladies and gentlemen, and tails never fails and Ridvan can go ahead and play tomorrow as that is massive for me. You've got Kuhn, you've got the guys on the other side like Maeda who's sniffing about and attacking. You've seen it before. They can change, they can go after, they can attack the fullbacks. And I just think defensively, we need the likes of Ridvan, who I thought was great at Parkhead. Really, really, really great in that aspect. And I'd like to see him play. If it's Barisic starting, I'm going to cross everything that he has a good by game. But I've seen Ryan Kent's good by game versus Celtic. Didn't he live up? I've seen Kamara's good by game versus Celtic and never done it. I've seen Morelos's good by game versus Celtic. None of these worked out. These romanticising, these stories, it's no a movie, ladies and gentlemen. You know what I mean? You're no plotting the script. You're no Quentin Tarantino. Just because it is someone's final dance doesn't mean they're going to rise to the occasion. Barisic gives me the fear, and if Ridvan can he play, I would love to see Sterling doing that left-hand side, as I think if you close Celtic up, if you close the wings, you didn't give them the space, you could really, really hurt them, and it forces everything into the middle. And then the likes of Diamandu, who I think has been massive. We just talked about Glenn Kamara, but our run when we were very good versus Celtic, who was the star man in the middle of the park? I know all of people's winning headlines. It was Kamara. It was turning away for Brown. It was turning away for this guy. It was turning away for Callum McGregor. It was getting McGregor sent off. He was absolute informed because he's got the ability to take a ball in a tight area, turn, flip the park and go. Now we've got someone like that. I think he's a, a more complete player than Kamara ever was. But now he's got ahead to go ahead and show it. You've got Lunny in there for the strength. The midfield battle is always key. But I feel like now we've got the ingredients we should have enough at Ibrox, it has to be enough. And again, if we want to win the title, ladies and gentlemen, we know what is required. But as you can see, there's a lot of thoughts percolating in this grey noggin. I am very, very nervous. I am very, very scared. It's going to be a very long weekend until kickoff. And I just hope five minutes into kickoff, I'm sitting like this with a smile on my face, seeing my Rangers team go out there and attack the Celtic side and rip any belief and hope away for them. That would be great, but as it is an old fun, ladies and gentlemen, I think it will be back and forth. Unfortunately, Kyogo's quality will probably have its say on the day. I just hope we've got enough to answer and counter and move on as a team is. I think we're playing the better stuff. I think we're looking the better side, but it doesn't matter what a diddy like me thinks or what's said online or what's posted here. It's about what's actually done on the park and then we hand it over to the players I'm going to go for it you know where I'm going I'm going channel favourite every day this week ladies and gentlemen Rangers 2 Celtic 1 it's the most base teams to score go game I've ever seen in my entire life I just hope when the chances fall to the likes of Dessers 
he can go ahead and grasp them. That would be absolutely sensational. Again, we must not lose this game, but it doesn't mean we should set up to draw this game. We've got to go ahead and win it and take that advantage. What about you? Let me know your thoughts and opinions down there in the old comment section below. That would be sensational. And as always, I will see you after the game, hopefully, with a smiley thumbnail. That would be nice. And until then, I've been TJ92. Thank you so much for watching. All the best and bye-bye.